Our shorts. Thank you for joining us. As a lot of you know, this is our weekly series of short product presentations and other relaxed lighting subjects, as we like to say. Also, to assist you in your journey through lighting's highways and byways, we offer and invite you to our Pinterest and YouTube pages. We have spent a lot of time putting together solutions from our manufacturing partners on our Pinterest page and have our library of shorts on YouTube. So hopefully if you find yourself uh, just wanting to cruise and look at great images and get information, it's right there. Today, after the presentation, we are going to share with you the last three of the achievements of our Chit Chat Challenge. Say that several times real fast, it's fun. Wait till you see what these creative minds have in store and what they did with the challenge and what they came up with. Please stick around for that. For today's presentation, uh, we invite you to drop your questions as they may arise in the chat bar. Mark will answer those after the presentation. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, we usually suggest you use speaker view at your end to adjust what you see. Uh, today, we're going to suggest you use the side-by-side -side mode, and then you can push and pull things as you need to balance out what's on the screen. Additionally, we typically don't try to show you beam or CCT and optical qualities in these types of presentations, as we find uh, artificial light just doesn't seem to translate well over the internet. But due to the nature of today's subjects, uh, we're going to. So you'll, if you see something that you really like, please drop questions into the bar. and We can try and figure out something for you to see it better. And that may well include you getting a sample wherever it is you're working out of uh, quarantine and office, wherever that is, we'll get something to you to check out, uh, check these great beams out. Now regarding lucent lighting. Okay, I get it. Everyone knows they're well established with longevity and global recognition in the architectural lighting markets around the world. But today we're going to share a very quick and in-depth look at an array of light engines available that you may not know about. Lots to cover. We're going to jump right in. Here's Mark Carroll to help us navigate this plethora of engine options. Good afternoon, Mark. Welcome. And um, please share. <laughs> thanks, James. And thanks to Oblini Rinker for setting this up. And uh, for everybody else, thanks for taking the time and showing the interest in, uh, you know, what I have to say. <laughs> um, uh, over the years, Lucent Light has developed uh, relationships uh, uh, with uh, several manufacturers of engines and lamps, uh, some of them long term, over a decade. And they're really more partnerships than uh, relationships. Um, and I'm talking cachet brands, important companies like uh, uh, Zaccato and Bridgelux, uh, Luminetics, Sora, Cree. Uh, but despite those great relationships and uh, the outstanding product that, that those relationships provide for us, year in, year out, over 50% of the fixtures that we sell in this facility, which is the uh, North American facility, are fitted with Lucent's proprietary solid state lighting. Now, probably some of you are surprised to hear that Lucent has its own proprietary engines and modules. And uh, I suppose probably all of you are surprised to hear that we've been offering that range for over a dozen years, um, but we have. And over those last 12 or 13 years, uh, we like to think we've become very good, uh, expert really, in designing electronics that fit perfectly into our range of fittings and you know, doing, making the, the most out of our features, uh, functions, and benefits. Um, the uh, uh, platform form, so to speak, for our solid state lighting really has four corners to it. Uh, there's the uh, M40 module. There's the uh, LED 35 module. There's the uh, LED 50 module. And there's the LED 70 module. Now the LED 35, 50, and 70 module are available in our legacy arrays, which are uh, multiple um, uh, multiple LEDs, multiple optics, and in our new uh, chip on board technology, uh, which is a single die or multiple dies placed close together, a single phosphor coating and a single optic. Um, obviously, these fixtures are quite a bit different in size. Uh, the, um, the M40 has a 25 millimeter footprint. Uh, the uh, LED 35 has a 35 millimeter footprint. The LED 50 has a 50 millimeter footprint and 
I'll leave it to your imagination to decide what the lead 70s footprint is. Um, and despite those sizes, uh, and despite you know, predictable differences in output, uh, the M40 anomaly produces uh, 200 lumens, the lead 35, uh, 500 lumens, the lead 50, 1,000 lumens, and the lead 70, uh, 2,000 lumens. Uh, despite those differences in size and performance, uh, these are, uh, believe it or not, electronically identical products. They're co uh, all co um, constant current. They all have the same topology, the same chip, the same circuit board, the same substrate, the same heat sink. And by same heat sink, I mean same engineering, same metallurgy. So they react exactly the same uh, to the on-off command. They uh, react exactly the same uh, to the dimming command. They occupy exactly the same point in the mechanical lips, the same space on the color rendering index. So when they're applied to a space, um, all these different uh, modules react uh, similarly and are basically create uh, an integrated system. Um, so I'll get to the product, but before I do, just a quick word on data. Um, Lucent uh, lives uh, with the adage, uh, there's, not such a, there's no such thing as too much information, right? Uh, so our data sheets have um, basically complied with the latest and greatest IES standards. We've got uh, R value and C value charts, uh, charts, uh, color vector graphics, and we list uh, things like um, forward voltage and drive current. Uh, basically, if not literally, virtually, everything that you need to, uh, you know, put a world-class award-winning lighting design together. So down to cases, let's talk about uh, the M40 to start. Uh, the M40 integrates into our range of um, uh, in-wall, uh, in-ground, and in-ceiling uh, recess products. Products um, like um, our in-wall, uh, for some reason I can't see it, but our in-wall uh, uh, um, IW product and this micro uh, product here. This is the uh, the micro. Um, this is the micro uh, soft. Uh, we're about four feet from the surface. It's creating uh, or developing about 165 lumens, and this has a, a beam spread uh, of I think uh, 18 degrees. Uh, and uh, my lovely assistant, uh, another product that the uh, uh, that the uh, M40 is in uh, our step light. So again, 200 lumens, um, color temperatures from 27 to 4,000 K. Everything that I show you today will have at least 92 CRI. Um, the M40 is um, uh, perfectly happy with phase dimming, analog dimming, DMX, Dolly, uh, PWM, uh, current control. Uh, it responds very well to all those different prototypes or uh, protocols. Um, and the other interesting thing about the M40 is because of its wattage and because of its forward voltage, these can be series wired um, up to 15 uh, units on a single power supply. Uh, but our most typical application is uh, 10 to 12 of these wired in series to say a 30 watt algo led uh, eco drive that is put into a small uh, UL enclosure somewhere in the space, uh, creating a, a beautiful space and a low procurement cost and a low installation cost. The uh, LED 35 module is, was a module that we weren't uh, really using in the U.S. Uh, up until recently, um, primarily because the LED 35 fits into um, a, um, uh, the 50 and 60 aperture type products that we offer in Europe. And we've just found that in a tray or a housing, 50 and 60 millimeter apertures are very difficult uh, to work with and maintain. However, uh, this year we've introduced our new uh, remodeler, and uh, we have um, sent all of our fixtures to UL for a, a UL 2108 um, uh, approval and have gotten it. So now our fixtures are available in a remodel and in a remote power supply, and that's going to allow us to use uh, some of our 50 and 60 millimeter apertures that we have in the past. So here we're looking uh, on the SLED 35. This says about 600 lumens. Um, this is a uh, a 20 degree beam spread, uh, 3000 Kelvin. And again, like James said, you know, obviously you're getting a general idea of what the beam looks like on a video. Uh, all these products are stocked in Durham and um, let uh, know that you need a uh, sample and we'll make sure to get one out to you. Um, so that's the lead 35, uh, you know, 600 lumens, 
2,700 to 4,000 Kelvin. Again, uh, responsive to uh, all the dimming protocols uh, and in beam spreads um, uh, from uh, 15 degrees uh, uh, um, up to standard 36 degrees, and we can go wider if need be. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of, uh, more time on the lead 51s than I have on uh, the uh, the other products, the lead 50s rather, and the lead 51s. Um, uh, lead 51 is without doubt the workhorse of our range. Uh, it fits into our sweet spot. Uh, it has the right performance for uh, our A products like pinholes and pluses and uh, edges. Uh, in its standard form, it's a 50 millimeter uh, footprint, 70 millimeters uh, tall, so it takes up approximately the same space as a, a 20 watt um, halogen MR16. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, MR16. Uh, it produces up to uh, 1200 lumens. It's available in 2700, 3000, 3500, 4000 K. Um, color temperatures, 92 CRI, and works very, very well with all of the, um, the different uh, dimming protocols. If, however, um, a 12 degree beam spread, which is the minimum beam spread we have on our standard uh, 51, is not good enough for you, we have um, the super spot. The super spot creates, uh, sorry, we've got a for some reason, sorry about that. Much better, right? <laughs> <laughs> the super spot creates a seven and a half degree beam spread, um, uh, 500 lumens of output, 22,000 uh, center beam candelas, 92 CRI, and again, responds well uh, to uh, all the different protocols. If beam angle isn't what's driving your, uh, your design uh, and CRI is, is um, we have our ultra series. The ultra series is a, a thousand lumen output uh, available in 2700 through 4000 Kelvin, 98 CRI with some R values uh, in the 99 range. Um, it responds uh, perfectly fine again to all the dimming protocols and is in effect, uh, in effect, really a museum quality module. Along with the LED 51 Ultra, uh, there is the uh, LED 71 Ultra and the LED 35 Ultra. We, uh, we introduced our first um, warm dim module, uh, the LED 50 and the LED 70 warm dim module. Um, it's got to be at least five years ago, probably more like six. Uh, that module um, was uh, designed around an array of, of multiple optics, multiple chips. Um, we did a very good job at the time at creating, you know, the, basically the dimming curve with, uh, with the CCT of a uh, halogen, um, a 20 watt uh, halogen MR16. We've just introduced um, the latest and greatest warm dim, our warm dim um, 51, which uses uh, chip on board technology. Uh, we can dim from 35, 3000, 2700 um, uh, down to 2000 Kelvin. Sorry? And um, uh, 2000 Kelvin. And uh, it is. Um, not Demi, we're not sure why, um, but um, it, uh, we'll, should, we'll have a work on that. I'll go to the, uh, the uh, Tunable White and we'll see about. Uh, the Tunable White is available in a 51 and a 71. Um, and it's, uh, 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 it uh, goes from a CCT of 5,000 down to 2,000. And from uh, dimming from, uh, goes from full, um, uh, full intensity, depending on the power supply, down to a 0.1 percent. We're using the uh, Eldola uh, Eldoled dual drive on this particular uh, demonstration. We also offer the uh, digital driver, the brand new Lutron digital driver, uh, as well. Uh, important to note that uh, the power supply um, needs to be dual drive. It's not you can't use uh, a single power supply or two standard power supplies. So there's a little bit of a, a form factor issue. It's a larger power supply and then it requires uh, two leads into the module and two sets of control wires into the power supply. But, um, you know, very fo small form factor uh, uh, on the LED 51 and very usable range. So the, um, the last product I'm gonna show you is the uh, LED 71. LED 71 is our most powerful module. Um, it, uh, in this particular, uh, Product is a 2700 Kelvin, 12 degree beam spread. Um, this is uh, again available 
in a multiple uh, beam spreads, 2,700, uh, 3,500, and 4,000 Kelvin, uh, available in the 92 CRI standard version and the 98 CRI um, ultra version and responds very well to uh, phase 010 uh, Dolly and DMX. Uh, I would also mention that the same topology, basically the same product without, uh, without integral heat, sink, heat sinks we use in some of our other product ranges like um, our, um, our monopoint, like this micro monopoint, low voltage monopoint, and in our uh, one, two, uh, five and 10 cell uh, line product. We stock all of the modules here in large quantities uh, and all of the different uh, uh, optics that are required to give you the different beam spreads. Uh, we also stock algo lead, Lutron, Hatch and Fulham here. Um, so uh, we can provide very quick service uh, for uh, samples or uh, for projects. So that's in a nutshell. Um, uh, is there any questions, anything I can answer? So, um, Mark, yeah. Um, what are the, what, did you say what the CRI is on the warm dim module? Yeah, the, the warm dim module has a 92 CRI across its range, as, by the way, does the tunable white. Okay. And, uh, and all of these are typically stocked, by the way, also in Durham? Yes, we, we have a complete stock of all the, all the uh, legacy products, which are the array, and all the new chip on board products, with, uh, which are the lead 51s and lead 71s, and then a vast array of uh, uh, drivers and, uh, for that matter, transformers. Okay, and what is the uh, dimming range on the warm dim as well? <clears throat> Well, the, again, it, it, it's, really, it's really subject to whatever power supply uh, that, that you choose to use. Okay. We like, uh, we like the, uh, the, um, uh, the Lutron uh, product, either the, uh, the two wire or the three wire. Uh, we also provide a hatch product that does extremely well. Uh, the hatch product gets you down to 5%. Uh, the Lutron product will get you down uh, to, if you choose, a 0.1%. Okay, and field, uh, field changeable optics, typically at least by a professional, are those available uh, on each of these modules as well? Yeah, uh, a little <clears throat> tricky, but all of the optics snap in and out. Uh, so uh, a, uh, a main, uh, somebody from, Lu uh, from Lucent, uh, somebody from Oblini Rinker, or somebody from a lighting design firm, uh, I think would have no problem at all in changing out the lenses. Uh, we've seen a couple train wrecks with uh, and fisted contractors trying to do that. Uh, but lighting professionals, as we like to say, uh, can do that with no problem at all. And all of these modules can be changed from below a finished non-accessible ceiling as well. Is that accurate? I'm sorry, say that again, James? That, that all of these modules can be serviced from below a ceiling that's non-accessible after installation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, uh, the, the, in fact, um, the, the trim pulls out, the modules attached to the trim, uh, and then there's a, 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 a quick disconnect that we can use. Uh, uh, and so it's all, it's all, it's all uh, tools, really. Fantastic. And the warranty on the typical uh, light engine from Lucent? Uh, it's, it's a five-year warranty uh, for the light engine and the power supply uh, from Lucent. Gotcha. Okay, well, um, it looks like those are all the questions in the queue. Um, it's great to see that there's, that there's this many uh, options. Um, you know, we did specifically want to go over engines because hopefully everyone knows there is an absolutely full range of medium, large, and small fixed position, accent, adjustable, and wall wash products, uh, as well as in some ingrades, as well as wall products. Um, there, um, I thought someone had just put another uh, question in here. Oh, a standard dimming range on warm dim and the widest beam spreads available on the 51, the lead 51 engine. Um, so, so take the last question first. The, the widest beam spread, standard beam spread on the lead 51 is 36 degrees. Uh, we can though, as an option, offer wider beam angles and have very recently put a 50 degree beam uh, angle on one of our lead, standard lead 51s. Yeah. Um, and as far as uh, the warm dim is concerned, 
Uh, same thing on the wide end of the spectrum with warm dim. There is one caveat to the warm dim uh, because of the chip on board technology. Um, it doesn't uh, perform well in a narrow beam configuration. So about the best we can do right now with a narrow beam on the warm dim is 24 degrees. Um, if you need a tighter beam spread, say somewhere around the 12 or 14 degree range, then we would have to uh, point you towards our legacy product, which is the arrays. And typically you can use two or three uh, shielding media in, in with, the t with the standard modules or all these modules? Well, well, yeah, the, 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 you can put, the module will take whatever uh, medium you, you require, but all of our uh, fittings allow at least three mediums to be added to, uh, right. to, to the fixture. Okay. Well, uh, so they're available in Deering, New York. They're a wide range and we're happy you were here to, to get the lowdown from Mark on what's available. Again, if there's anything that you've seen today that you'd like to see in your office or in your hands and vet out for an application or just to see the quality of the 90, uh, 92 and the 98 CRI products, we really would like to get those in front of you as well, of course. Mark, thanks for doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Uh, now, the other moment that a lot of you have been waiting for, the Aura Chit Chat Origami Challenge reveals. So for those who don't know, we solicited several designers and asked if they would be willing to take the challenge. We sent them out a box. They didn't know what was going to be in it. There was some goodies in there that we videoed them opening them and gave them a timeline to build something interesting. Last week, we revealed uh, the two achievements of that. And today we share the last three. This is a short video, three quick presentations. And um, please enjoy uh, the no spec sheet required portion of our presentation. Have at it, thanks. My name is Gary Cohen. I'm a project manager at Brand Order. I focus mostly on hospitality projects. We do some commercial projects as well. We cater to a very special clientele as well, like interior designers. Yeah, it's a great firm, great journey. You get to travel. Um, what more can you ask for? So, <laughs> what I was actually kind of thinking about, um, I guess it's like metamorphic or kind of ties in with origami like you could fold stuff or create something um, I was trying to get something organic it, it being flexible kind of gave, gave me that flexibility it kind of tied into the concept or that's kind of what I had in the back of my mind um, vision wise yeah like I like to do things off feeling so, yeah which kind of um, encapsulates who I am as a person <laughs> so should it be like a decorative fixture should it be like a table lamp or something like you know, yeah like very artistic so I would have like a certain color palette um, I want to have like certain sections so basically the twine and the LED board is from the box and uh, the other stuff is what I kind of brought to the table so <laughs> we use like a little gold clip as well from my kitchen it's a little closer so. it was cut um, the LED um, sheet and then I kind of like folded it and I overlaid like a uh, what is it? I think it's a material, uh, some type of like uh, composite like plastic material that has like perforations on there. Um, so when it hits like the LED board in certain locations, it kind of gives it like a warm feel. So if you could look at it, you see some look really warm and then the others look like white light. So kind of playful. More like a suspended um, pendant or decorative fixture. I think very attractive. So. Hi, I'm Natalie Colbert, a senior associate at Flying Bethel Bernstein Lighting Design. I'm happy to participate in this challenge. From the time I opened the box, I was thinking about it. I ended up deciding to go a completely different route that I was thinking more of an organic shape instead of uh, like folding paper as you would do with or um, origami. 
It's also because I decided to go organic, I tried maybe to use few supplies as possible. That was also a little bit of a challenge I was giving myself and to see with fewer supplies how I would work. And maybe also I was kind of channeling my contractor side. I only use the panels and the connectors obviously and um, the twine. But in addition, I took um, colored filters. I ended up doing a sculpture and I used the colored gels, but what I ended up doing, the, one of the things I did with the twine is that I was stitching the panel. So essentially I stitched the filter onto the panel. So you can see that it's like stitch on there. I also, it's a little bit hard to see, but I added um, some words of wisdom. So actually here you can see, it says, it's a little bit hard to see versatile risk. And I was thinking also of the challenges that we face as designers. Yeah, it was fun. Hi, my name is Ryan Fisher. I'm with Focus Lighting in New York. I was inspired um, by a couple things, a uh, glowing um, light panel from Evo Light. Um, I knew I had to use it in some interesting way that took advantage of the properties that it has inherently and in, like all these sparkling glowing points on the board as well as its flexibility and uh, customization to be able to um, transform it into something else. Uh, one of the things that's affected us most in um, the lighting industry, of course, is the severe impact that all this has had to the hospitality industry, the food and beverage industry, um, those clients that we work with a lot that unfortunately are um, slowing down or, or taking a big hit. I wanted to build something that was a little bit of a tribute to them and you know the great times that I've had working on hospitality projects in the past and hopefully remind me of the good times that are yet to come. I haven't come up with a name for it yet. I kind of call it the centerpiece, but it's something that is both a centerpiece that you can sit on a table, but also it could serve as like a wall sconce. I probably have two different types of uh, objects in here. I have one object, which is a, um, a votive candle. Actually, have some shot glasses in the middle. The three center pieces here are shot glasses. Um, so you kind of get a little bit of the sparkle from the shot glasses, and then you get some glow from the candles. And then we have a, an underglow as well to, to highlight the table or the wall surface that it's mounted to. So. Uh, it was fun to sort of experiment here at home without the full tools of the office at my disposal, just seeing what I had around. I made a little light lab in my kitchen the other night. It was fun. <laughs> There we are. Thank you, Carl. I couldn't unmute myself. So um, we've had so much fun doing this. We hope that you find the, the relaxation in it and the, the value in it. We're going to start another challenge next week uh, or the following week and, um, and invite you to, if you want to get involved, talk to your rep uh, or call me. I'm James at the agency and available. Um, we, we like to have fun while we're also sharing some time with you and some technical information. And um, we call those chit chat challenges, just like we call these aura shorts. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks for sharing our shorts. That's it for today. We uh, do this every week, every Thursday at 1215. And again, at three o'clock, we repeat it. We are going to take a break next week. So, um, you get Thursday off, but the following week, we expect you to be here to see what's going to happen with the next manufacturer and with our Halloween challenge. So with that, thank you for supporting O'Blaney Raker Associates, our partner manufacturer, Lucent Lighting. Mark Carroll, thank you for a great job. Reminder, we are New York strong. Even you in New Jersey over there, buddy boy. Stay safe. 
Hope to see you all next week after, and um, adios.